Hi, it's Anna. Welcome back to Books on the Go. I'm here with a tag video today. So I was tagged by Sean Mooney at Sean the Book Maniac and I'll link his channel down below. And this is the Good Books with Bad Endings tag. I think it was inspired by Eric Carl Anderson at The Lonesome Reader. And I think from watching his and Anna's videos about the women's prize long list it might have been the book small pleasures which they both found they really really loved and then they were dissatisfied with the ending and sean has converted that into a tag video i'll be quite brief today for a couple of reasons one i've got some children playing out the back and anything could go wrong at any moment so i have to get get back out there i'm on duty um, the other reason is that i'm i've realized that i'm not good at remembering how books end and particularly if it's a good book that I enjoyed I generally I don't remember it as having a bad ending and on the whole the books that you really enjoy are uh, consistent or strong you know throughout um, and then if it's a book that I did think had a bad ending on the whole it they're probably books I haven't enjoyed, I haven't kept them, and they've kind of gone from my memory with one, one exception, which I'll come to. Uh, so this will include spoilers. So I will, there's a general spoiler alert for this video, and when I come to the books, I'll tell you that I'll be spoiling them. So the first one is one that I've just finished, Passenger 23 by Sebastian Fitzek. And this is a crime novel, it is a good, crime thriller and I'll give you the premise and I when I say it's good I found it quite compelling a little bit crass for my taste but really compelling great premise and I'll tell you what that is it's every year on average 23 people disappear without trace from cruise ships presumed suicides or tragic accidents no one has ever come back until now and the protagonist is a police officer or police psychologist, Martin Schwartz, who lost his wife and son on a cruise. And he is back on the same cruise ship because an elderly woman has contacted him. She has uh, something, some information for him. Uh, and she says, only a few months ago, another mother and daughter also vanished. So it seems like there's a serial killer on board, but then the missing daughter reappears. So it takes off from there. But I found with this book, so this book is very twisty and there's a lot going on. It's I think that's a really good premise for a book though. The, the passengers disappearing from the cruise ship, I love that as a hook that gets you in. Um, and it does make you think it would be easy to do if you were a serial killer, what a great place to get rid of the bodies. Um, so I found two issues with it. One is to do with the ending. The other one is there were just so many characters. So there's Martin and then his wife and son who were on a cruise five years ago and disappeared, presumed dead. Then we have uh, I think it's Naomi and Anouk and so they have disappeared a few months ago and we meet so spoiler alert I'll be spoiling the plot of this one quite comprehensively so we have we Naomi and Anouk who've vanished we then meet Anouk she's the missing daughter who's reappeared Naomi is also still somewhere so they're two more characters that we follow and then there's another mother and daughter I've forgotten the mother's name the daughter is Lisa and it appears that Lisa's planning perhaps to end her life on the ship or well, something's up with Lisa who's a teenager and very unhappy and so we're following them in the present day and with the concerned that there's either a serial killer who's after Lisa or what we don't know but Lisa seems to be in danger uh, and I found that just too many characters to keep track of or there was there were lots of balls in the air so I suppose one of the things was trying to keep track of these characters um, there's also the captain of the ship and the doctor Dr Beck um, Ellen Beck the doctor of the ship as well who are quite key characters and the owner Yegor and I found it hard to try to keep track of all the characters who's actually who's missing who's meant to be dead who's alive 
where are they um, on the ship or at all and but there, so he's juggling lots of balls in the air so the you're in suspense to see how will he pull this together and who's the serial killer you're trying to guess who it might be all the way through and it, it, it's interesting because the people that seem fairly obvious seem to be ruled out early on. But anyway, you get towards the end and I'm thinking, what is the story? Who's the serial killer and what's their motivation and what's happening? You know, it's very twisty and the twists are quite funny sometimes. Like someone will die, but then, oh, it turns out they didn't fall into the ocean. They just fell into the swimming pool and things like that that you think, you know, really... Um, but anyway, we get to the end and it turns out that the serial killer, and I'm still not quite clear because I got so baffled, I, I sort of got so discombobulated by the end, but it seems that the serial killer was the chambermaid who we have barely met. She was there in the first few chapters, but hardly at all. We've hardly seen this chambermaid. And she seems to be the serial killer. And the motivation was that she was abused as a boy because she was a boy who's then transitioned to be a woman. And she was abused by her mother. And her motivation is to kill mothers who are abusing their children. So I found that just didn't it didn't ring true because it's so rare that that happens and not that it doesn't happen but it is they say in the book it's 10 percent of cases i think it's possibly lower but she is also just such a minor character and the whole thing felt unbelievable it, it was a letdown you know you're waiting to see what could this be and whilst yes it's a surprise because it's not what you expected and that can be really interesting it was it was also like, oh, really? I, I don't think so. You know, that just doesn't quite ring true. So anyway, there were lots of balls in the air and they kind of came down in a very, to me, unrealistic way. So I didn't get on with that one, or well, the ending, certainly. So that was Passenger 23. Um, another one, which we've talked about on the podcast, is Sorrow and Bliss by Meg Mason. And this, again, really good book. I laughed out loud a lot during this. It gives you a lot to think about. It's about Martha, who is uh, very troubled, very sort of depressed is one word for it, but she's really struggling with her mental health and she's married to Patrick, but we know from the beginning that they've separated and we don't know why. And so it sort of backtracks through her life and she has a lot of things that she's coping with and managing to do with her mental health and from time to time visits a doctor and tries to find out what's wrong with her and she really wants to know what is it because it's so oppressive to her and it, it makes it very challenging for her marriage for example so it's certainly a factor there so there are scenes where she's throwing things at her husband you can imagine for him it would be very challenging very difficult and for her she's doing the best she can but you know barely functioning and then towards the end and pot spoiler you know towards the end she does get a diagnosis and the things that i found dissat unsatisfactory about this were one the author does not tell us what the diagnosis is so she gets it so it's really there's this huge build up to this what is it and not because the reader necessarily needs to know but because martha the character really makes that a big issue so you do feel like it's important to know what it is and then she leaves it as a blank and but on the other hand it there are there's medication that's available for this blank illness and she takes the medication and that really helps and so you you're left wondering well what is it and if it's helped by medication, it's all very strange. But anyway, and then in the afterword at the end of the book, uh, the author's note, she says, this illness isn't a real illness and it's just made, it's all fictional. And I just thought, you know, that's fine because I think she didn't want to give labels or whatever. But, but the fact that it had been such a plot point meant that 
we were the readers sort of wanting to know uh, because the character wanted to know and so it felt really coy to then pull back and say well yeah but I'm not going to tell you and in fact it wasn't anything true that it was all made up and yet the symptoms felt very real and and realistic so it did feel like something that people would really struggle with in in real life so it was reading as a really authentic story until that point for me but I know uh, I don't have mental health issues and so I read it from that perspective I think people who do live with mental illness have really loved it you know many lots and lots of people have loved it so I'm sort of in the minority with that one but um, for me that was a bit like the pulling the rug out from under your feet but not that bad but a bit of a letdown so that was Sorrow and Bliss by Meg Mason, and that's all I have time for, but they were two that I did think on the whole, they were good books, well executed, and good, you know, achieving what they wanted to do, and then the ending sort of threw me, or yeah, left me unsatisfied. So um, let me know if you have read any good books lately with bad endings. Uh, I'm sorry that I'm so bad at even remembering the endings of any books that I've read. I have to read more carefully, I think. But anyway, I hope you're well and I'm throwing this tag open to anyone who'd like to join in and I hope you'll do it as well and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.